Okay, I'm not sure why this is happening. Okay. Yeah, Chris, so you're saying, um, so we have the, the yeah, so in terms of um, uh, Pastor had shared, yeah. Yeah, Pastor shared the PC dream. Mm. And uh, that is kind of the, you know, the, um, uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, the, the direction the church would go to, uh, you know, yeah, in in the in the future. Mm. So um, I had just a couple of questions with regards to the dream where it seemed to be sort of, um, um, uh, you know, um, indicate that you know uh, they could be a you know a direction towards becoming a kind of like a like a mega church, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. There are these um, these um, the mega churches uh, that have uh, you know uh, uh, come about. You know, mm -hmm. uh, some some of them are you know um, you know very uh, US centric. Some of them are you know global mm -hmm. global in nature. So just wanted to understand uh, would that be a direction uh, for APC Church? I mean, am I correct to say that you know that that is what is there uh, in, mm -hmm. in the APC dream? Mm. And um, um, I guess the other question would be just around, um, you know, um, uh, you know, is there is there a, uh, is there some kind of a timeline around that? Um, uh, you know, uh, where you think uh, where you think that that is sort of you know, uh, and are there some milestones are, are, are around building that? Particularly, mm. I think in the in the area of uh, you know building churches outside of India. Uh, which is, uh, you know, um, mm. think, um, something that is also mentioned in the APC dream. So, yeah, mm. just wanted to get that clarification. Yeah, yeah. So, so in terms of uh, you know growth and uh, you know expanding and moving on to, um, yeah, and I, I think the numbers would have been you know like fifty thousand in each location. Uh, I think the pastor would have shared that, right? So, so that has always been there right from the start, right from right from two thousand one. Right. That has always been there. Um, that uh, you know, five locations uh, and covering entire Bangalore, and still we know that you know there will be uh, the need will be more. So, um, uh, so, uh, so that that uh, that big picture has always been there. And um, so, in terms of structure, you know, like uh, you know, is this moving on to become a mega? Mega church. Well, it, it is a big vision, and uh, and the uh, uh, like. I don't know what uh, you know what we infer by saying okay, mega church. But that's just the fact that okay, th it is a big vision. There are people uh, you know who we can reach out to, and the people who can be part of the vision, and um, and we will continue to do that. So in terms of structure, well, we don't know. You know, like uh, what what are the other changes? But we also know that uh, you know uh, with the uh, with the bigness we also need to maintain the uh, the personal contact and the smallness of it so which is why you know the, again the life group ministry uh, where we uh, we uh, you know connect people to life groups so you can uh, be part of a smaller group in order to uh, spiritually grow be mentored uh, and uh, discipleship and everything happens in in a smaller setting right so yes there is a tendency to you know be lost in that sense if it's a big uh, just because of the bigness of it right so um so that you know always is there you know that big picture is always there and the, and the move towards that and the move towards that is of course to to reach you know to it uh, in terms of evangelism in terms of discipleship in terms of teaching in terms of in terms of people doing ministry as well Right, you know, uh, so you see the apostolic Ephesians four verse eleven and twelve, and I mean the uh, the fivefold ministry. We see that uh, equipping uh, saints, equipping the saints to do the work of ministry. So it is not just one person or one team, but it's the entire uh, entire body which is doing the work of ministry. Um, you know, people getting saved, people getting. Um, uh, connected to church and being built up and learning to follow Christ, which is what discipleship basically is, and then and being um, coming to the place of discovering the the their vision, the purpose, the call, the gifting, and launching out, uh, you know, to do their call and purposes of God. So that's the you know the whole cycle, and and uh, so that is uh, so that is where so the move is always there the intentional um, uh, towards that is always uh, there so in terms of timelines i really don't know chris you know um, so timeline uh, i don't know that by this you know we can put 
timelines, but then uh, we can put timelines for, okay, uh, this is what we want to do. Um, but really, uh, you know, it's a, it's a journey again. It's a lifelong journey. So, yeah, so that's what I would say. Um, okay, succession plans. Yeah, yes, the, there, there are uh, young people who are being mentored, who are being, um, you know, who are growing up. Uh, and uh, um, so that is that has always been there. That has been vocalized. That has been shared. And uh, you know, people who are being built up. But of course, you know, we don't say, okay, this person is the next one. No, that is it's too early to um, to say that. Um, you know, who will be the uh, you know who will be the senior pastor or you know. So, but the but then pastors already always shared. Okay, this is what he would like to do in this in this decade and the next decade and so on. And and the, the thing is always to raise up leaders. Um, and and if you see um, all all our pastors, actually, uh, they have been people who are been part of church, uh, came to church, started serving in church, uh, discovered their call uh, and purpose, um, discovered the gifting, started serving, being faithful in that, and then kind of grew. Um, you know, um, grew spiritually and came to a place of serving others came to a place of leadership and uh, uh, you know they were in that place for some time and then they were you know uh, uh, invited to take their place as uh, spiritual leaders or you know to take their place as pastors so so that's been the that's been the route actually so um yeah so the plan is there uh, and there is definitely, you know, ministering, grooming of, um, grooming, grooming of the next generation, the next leaders. You know, we have youth leaders, um, and we have uh, young adults also, who are um, who are serving in different areas. But um, they have been, uh, I mean, not with this in mind, but then growing up to be leaders, right? So that is uh, that is always happening. Right. Any other? Questions? Um, okay, so let me just get into the specifics of, you know, since we are uh, also talking about leadership and grooming people. So it starts from, uh, you know, right from the time when people are saved to, to uh, and, you know, you they come into the fellowship or they maybe, you know, they've been serving elsewhere and they're coming and they're part of the, you know, they feel that they are connected to the vision. So it starts from uh, people growing spiritually. Right. So as a pastor, as a as a church ministry to ensure that that happens. So, um, of course, you know, uh, one of the ways by which um, they grow spiritually is when they uh, when when people receive of the word, when they are collectively there in prayer and, and receive of the word uh, and ministry. In, uh, uh, every time the church gathers and typically, you know, it's a Sunday service. So that's a, that's a that's a big um or a portion of time which is allotted for that, right? So that happens. So in addition to that, you know, what are these several other avenues that can be there? One is, of course, life group where there is a reiteration of, uh, or, uh, or you know, you put to practice what you've heard on a Sunday, um, Sunday morning service, and then you, and then you come and you, you know, you talk about it, what works, what does not work, and there are others who are, who are, you know, helping you on that journey as well. So life group is another avenue. Um, uh, and apart from that, also, what I've seen is uh, these schools of ministry, you know, for a deeper walk in the Lord to, um, to look at certain topics like maybe healing and deliverance, the prophetic, the apostolic, prayer, um, uh, uh, you know, workplace ministry, um, uh, uh, what are the others? Yeah, so Christian life, marriage, and so on. So these are, you know, some of these things which we've had in the school of ministry, right? urban church, church planting, um, evangelism. And these are some topics uh, where marriage and family we've actually had as a separate uh, ministry, not as part of school of ministry. So these are some topics which, uh, you know, and I, and I remember I, I when I came to church as a, and serving as a volunteer, just, attending church. So those days we used to have on Saturday, it was called School of Ministry. And uh, so they will, they will be teaching on these topics. And I remember attending a few of them. Um, so it will go on till afternoon and, uh, uh, you know, Saturdays, one Saturday in a month. And so, they, you know, we've we call them the weekend schools now. Uh, and we, 
had those over weekend saturday and sunday but now we've kind of condensed it you know and having it only on saturdays um so we have the weekend schools happening um one day one saturday in a month where the um, you know the you know where there is input there is teaching and in-depth teaching on a certain uh, you know topic so so you see that uh people are growing in that as well you know let's say growing in prayer growing in um you know you could have um so maybe some times of worship like worship nights or five days of prayer you know these are things um that um I'm not saying this is just exclusive to APC, but then I'm sure other churches also have this, you know, times where um, the people are equipped, people are strengthened, um, exposed to you know, uh, uh, the presence of God and spending extended time in worship and prayer and, and growing in that. Um, so we've, uh, you know, had that. Uh, and, uh, and of course, because of the pandemic, kind of had to slow down things, but then those are being reintroduced again. So the weekend schools, a very valuable time, uh, for uh, uh the challenge again is to get people to be part of it right um because people have only so much time people have responsibilities and then uh you know there needs to be a push right so um so that is that is of course a challenge right so what is helping is really um uh, in this season is the uh, the online bible college and the e platform because uh, a lot of people have inquired in the past, you know, do you have something uh, where I can learn from home? Something like a correspondence course, right? You send me the notes, I do it, or something online. And uh, and now there's an opportunity to do that. And we see some uh, church folks doing that also, you know, doing some courses and some having finished the foundations course and being very excited about it and, and sharing with others. So, um, so we see um, that, uh, you know, those kind of things happening. So, um, so really, to nurture people in the word and spirit, to ground people in it, is uh, is a big, big responsibility uh, of the church and uh, the pastoral ca calling. And and because of the teaching anointing, which is very strong, and the apostolic, you know, we've seen this uh, unfold, and we've seen this in place in church. Um, so yeah, so that is uh, one. Uh, one other thing that uh, that uh, we as pastors, we as um, you know, maybe starting off, you can be mindful of that and say, okay, let's do this. Right? Will everybody be excited and jump in straight away? No. Uh, there might be a lot of pushback saying, you know, uh, you know, this is the only day we have. We have so much thing. But then eventually, you know, you'll see that um, because you are, you know reiterating certain things and uh, and also teaching why we need to do this you know it is it is biblical it's not that uh, it, it's it's that everybody has everybody is a minister so if you are a minister as a saint of god then uh, you better be equipped and yes uh, you can be equipped on your own if you're doing certain things but then here's an avenue to be equipped and to pursue the call of god to discover what what God has already put in your life and uh, intentionally learn in these things uh, because we are called to grow in the knowledge of God uh, and uh, well not downplaying our quiet time and there's a that is that is of course the best place to receive from him and learn from him but you know as the ministry we have this and we are called to do this to equip the saints for the work of ministry so you know that happens as well you know, so, so these are some observations from uh, my journey with APC, and uh, my observations of uh, the life uh, of Pastor Ashish, um, uh, which has inspired me, motivated me, challenged me uh, many times, and uh, in my own life. Right? So, I, th I just thought uh, it'll be helpful for us to, uh, for me to share that, uh, for us to uh, learn that. I just also want to. Um, uh, talk about you know we we talked about the fact that uh, of course one is uh, spiritual input the other thing is to also um, you know invite people to serve in church invite people to serve as volunteers um, definitely you know when 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 we hear about that we, we, you know the, a lot of people say I'm not given opportunities to share the word you know straight away jump in and say God has called me and this church is not giving opportunities well it cannot work that way. Right? It cannot work that way. We need to test and try and see, the, and and then you know, uh, well, it's uh, it's 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 totally a privilege to be invited 
it's not an entitlement we need to understand that right so um so it's 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 uh, we, uh, as long as we have that uh, thing but then you know to provide opportunities for the church for the believers for the people of god to start serving uh, in church to provide that uh, and we we learned about that that's one of the responsibilities of the you know pastoral uh, practical things or the responsibilities of the uh, of the pastor right so so here at apc also you know several opportunities uh, we uh, opened up to to serve and and uh, and i was just going through some of the testimonies of people who have served and grown in church so these opportunities actually um there is a sense of community that happens because they are serving uh, it could be uh, in ushering it could be in uh, in, in in something simple simple like you know like hospitality um it could be uh, in uh, in setup you know uh, sound and setup um it, it, or you know several other things it could be helping the children's ministry uh, so whatever but there is a sense of community that you know you get to know people um you your 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 skills your resources your time your talent and everything is you know you get an opportunity to serve god in in that manner and and also you you grow you know you grow in your understanding and you grow um in your um in your character your motives are tested your um definitely you know your endurance is tested um you want to sleep in and uh, you know the whole world is sleeping in but you need to get up and go and uh, be there you know before everyone shows up in order to arrange chairs <laughs> or you or you need to go there to you know take care of certain things or, or you know you're moving speakers fixing cables and all that so um it definitely tests your endurance and it builds you up we you know we sometimes forget that these small things really build you up uh, you know build character uh, in us and right? build character in us um sometimes nothing major can happen but you are just there showing up and you're there you know uh, taking care of parking maybe um and it builds strength in you it builds you know certain qualities like persistence and faithfulness and um and and, and endurance and long suffering and all these things are being built up right um so um several avenues uh, to to serve and these things also continue to change as the congregation grows as the church grows right see uh, uh, and these avenues to volunteer and to serve and as the ministry grows as there are new uh, there are new opportunities uh, which which present right so uh, maybe on the technical side maybe on the uh, you know the design side maybe on the social media side you know many uh, many opportunities come up to serve uh, to volunteer and serve as the ministry grows okay so uh, i just want to share um, you know a few testimonies you know i was just going through our thanksgiving videos when we uh, finished 20 years of uh, ministry and uh, of course some of these phases would be familiar to you so let's hear some of their testimonies so you realize that they've journeyed with the church right you realize that there are some things that they have done uh, which has helped them and uh, you also realize that they've taken certain steps in order to uh, you know uh, in order to in order to serve in order to be um uh, faithful in serving and so on so you you learn a, a, a bit of that as well from their testimonies okay so let me share a few of these uh, videos and uh, and then we'll we'll come back Hi church family, this is Vinny and Jean and we have two children, Jeremy and Nora uh, and we're so glad to uh, just talk about our journey in APC, uh, just looking back in 2003-2004, around that time, we were very hungry uh, looking for, uh, looking to grow uh, in, in Christ 
and uh, uh, looking for uh, a church that teaches the word uh, so well and that's when we came across APC and uh, um, uh, the, the times of uh, worship, the, the times of the messages uh, through which we were blessed immensely, uh, the solid word uh, that was preached uh, through APC as well as uh, the, 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 the intimate walk uh, that we were able to establish uh, because of uh, being set in this church uh, has helped us so much in our, in our journey, in our walk with God and uh, uh, just looking back at uh, those initial days uh, I, I remember, uh, you know, when the, when the message got over and it was time for the benediction, we used to just uh, run out of church uh, because we were a little shy and, uh, uh, you know, not uh, uh, ready to meet with people. Uh, but uh, uh, over the years, uh, you know, we've, we've become so close with uh, uh, with us as a family. It's been wonderful to, to grow uh, alongside and minister uh, alongside many of you. Uh, and uh, uh, we just thank God for the various ministries that he has helped us to, to be part of uh, and it's been such a blessing. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, I, I remember coming into APC and uh, just, just remembering those initial times coming from a traditional background into a church like this and there was this conflicting pull that I had, you know, a sense of discomfort because of the experiences that were there as against, you know, the, the strong pull to return. But as we kept coming, uh, some things that really touched us was the uncompromised word of God and the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit that, that we began to experience, which began to change our lives. And as we, uh, you know, kept coming, I, I personally was stirred to serve and I remember the first time that I served was as a volunteer in Children's Church and it was way back maybe 2007-2008 where at that point of time it was no teaching, nothing, it was just being there as a volunteer just overseeing things to a point where uh, you know I, I may have moved into, was called to do announcements in church, you know those physical announcements then moving into being in a part of a prayer team then uh, getting into uh, campus elevates, uh, moving from there into teaching the children's church into chrysalis and then being part of, uh, of a ministry team. When I look back, you know, I'm just amazed at the way how this has, has taken place. It was never planned. It was never, I never even dreamt that God would use us, you know, timid, uh, shy people into um, just speaking the word of God. But uh, I believe that um, it was just a, a response of obedience uh, that, that, that he wanted. And then it was just a dependence uh, on God. I mean, I never knew what to do in each of these phases. But then just depending on God and he would equip and he continues to equip and uh, help us through the things that we are called to do. So I think this is also a call to just encourage each one of us to serve in whatever way we can because God will just multiply the service that we put in for him and uh, we just thank God for placing us here for the way that uh, God use, is using us and is just ministering to us and working on us as a family. Um, we love to be a part of this church and we look forward for many more years so wishing all of us a happy 20th anniversary. All glory to God, God bless you all. God bless. Okay, that was one. Uh, I'm sure all of you recognize uh, Jean. So, yeah, so that was their journey. I'll just play one more. Um, okay. been with APC for more than nine years. And I'm Lena, Tarun's wife, and I've been attending APC since 10 years. 
it's been such a blessing to be part of so many volunteering teams and serving at APC all these years. In fact, we both met each other at one of the you know teams, uh, the sound and setup team, and we got married. Ah, that was so true. Um, but that was not our motive when we started serving. But God has worked through many things as we serve. We have learned a lot of things. I thank God for how the congregation has come together as a family to put together our wedding. I'm so thankful for that. Yeah, and we, we especially want to mention the premarital counseling that we had at APC. I think God used it uh, you know, very much to help us to grow in our marriage each day. There are so many events that I could list that I have reaped all the benefits from. In fact, we have been part of the youth camps, the family camps, the professionals' workplace ministries, the couples' dinners. There are so many events that we have just become part and we have been blessed so richly in various areas of our life. Yeah, I think all these experiences, you know, God has used us to grow professionally. We had a great blessing of, uh, you know, the publications and, and the various events. And that really helped us to grow as professionals in our corporate sectors. And uh, we also want to mention that we made a lot of friends. Uh, the wonderful biryani times after services and uh, you know these are friends for lifetime you want to just thank God for each one of them. Thank God for all the mission trips that we have been part of in fact uh, we have learned a lot of uh, things uh, being part of those missions. I think it was a great humbling experience especially I remember the Bihar trip we learned a lot of things and you know in all these uh, events that we were part of, God was teaching us how we can serve individually and also as a couple. Yes, uh, we carry some lifetime memories from not just these trips but all the events that we were part of. We want to congratulate APC for this 20 years. Congratulations on People's, People's Church. Church. Wow, 20 years of being a channel of His blessing. More glorious things are on the way. I'm sure greater things are yet to come. All the best. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, Tarun and Lena. I think all of us know. Um, um, Tarun, uh, where, if you're... Are you here? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pastor. Want yeah. to share about... Uh, you know, Tarun and Lena actually had a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, friends. Uh, and like they said, you know, almost after every church service, uh, they would have, uh, you know, they would have lunch, they would uh, different restaurants and, you know, so there's a great sense of community and friendship that kind of built. And like uh, Tarun also mentioned, they they met, uh, you know, Tarun and Lina met each other as they were serving in the sound and setup uh, team. And so we have uh, couples like that also, they met in church and, and so on. Um, so, um, yeah. so Tarun, you, you want to share uh, very briefly, uh, some things about um, like maybe about you can share about um, you know serving and what were your thoughts initially about serving in church and uh, yeah just take a couple of minutes to share that thanks yeah uh, yeah pastor it's a it, it was in fact a great experience in uh, one one thing that I really like about um, serving is like it, it's open and uh, you uh, if you want to join a setup team, you don't have to be fully equipped to do something. You get to learn a lot of things as well. You don't have to know how to do things, but once you get in, there's a, a element of learning that you go through, and also there's a, a community that you will become a part of. We still remember the uh, kind of uh, breakfast prayers that we had. You know, literally, we had a lot of people uh, coming in when we were praying, prophetic words being shared, uh, and we 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 have like that that's a community that just like you know carries forward and we can never uh, forget those moments of uh, being together and serving together and it, it, it's kind of a mission just to come and set up everything in such a way that uh, there are no issues during the service um, so and there are so many teams in APC and it's it's such a uh, joy to actually learn so many things uh, live streaming media presentation you have a connect team specifically trying to connect with people it was so uh, interesting to 
uh, see such diverse uh, opportunities to volunteer and all these things play uh, played a very good role when it comes to uh, coming back to work as well like you know you learn a lot of things at church it's the amount of learning that you have uh, serving as a volunteer is much more than any training pro program that i went through in the corporates uh, uh, because it, it's live and <laughs> you you see people and you are you are right there in action trying to do things uh, it, it's uh, it, it's so good i still remember uh, so many events i just wanted to share one thing uh, when i was very new as a uh, like volunteer I, i remember once there was water spilled on the corridor when people were walking in uh, uh, and then i was uh, 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 trying to find out where is this person who actually the caretaker of st joseph's who can come and clean this uh, and then he disappeared uh, and there is water and people have to walk in and uh, it's uh, not looking good and melky walked in i remember that time he was the service coordinator he walked in and he told oh, okay what a fellow and he went and he got the broomstick he got the cloth and uh, literally uh, he was fully dressed up at 10:30 before the service was starting he was cleaning the floor <laughs> and people were walking by and was like okay you you get in and get your hands dirty but keep the house so that's uh, something that i really uh, learned as a volunteer uh, go to any extent but uh, keep the house as your house so that's that's something uh, good to learn yeah thank you tarun thank you that was uh, yeah it was good so um yeah some uh, very down to earth you know things happen uh, it's interesting you know when you look at the journey of the life of the church and um, you know the uh, community around the world and spirit so it's it's um, uh, it's exciting of course there are always ups and downs challenges and i'm sure tarun will uh, be able to talk about many of those incidents also right um, so uh, i just want to say that um, you know that we are so sorry i didn't realize that uh, my mic was muted okay so we are uh, just to say that we are a work in progress you know just like individually that we are a work in progress any church and in ministry it's a work in progress right so there will be unfinished parts there will be um, you know there 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 are definitely uh, you know um, uh, weaknesses limitations uh, uh, you know errors being committed and and so on so uh, but then we are a work in progress and we are journeying on to perfection right so um, and we have been given so much uh, in christ to live a uh, overcoming life Well, that's the other thing so um we don't have to go back we don't have to fall back right uh, we we learn from our mistakes and we we pick up the pieces and we keep going right um maybe uh you know just a couple of one more i would i would just uh, share one more testimony and then um we we'll look at uh, yeah we'll just pray and then close right um now this well actually um maybe yeah we'll just stop here i'll probably i'll just share uh, one more um just want to encourage us and i'll you can visit the there are many testimonies there you can visit the you know the web the link that that page and you can check it out for yourselves um okay uh we miss you guys and hoping to see you all soon we want to take this opportunity to just say thank you for being such a wonderful influence in our lives i spent about 10 to 12 years being part of apc my pretty much my entire youth was spent at apc apc is more of a family to me than my actual family my best relationships and friends are from apc i've spent great times god moments with apc i spent some very difficult times at apc but the whole leadership and the church has backed me up and been there and been that environment where i could grow and learn and be trained into becoming everything that god has called me to be so thank you so much when i had first moved to bangalore so many years ago i had no real intent of pursuing the lord but the lord pursued me so hard through the incredible people at apc my pastor at the time and her sister would drive all the way to this remote location that i lived in just to get me rides to church on so many sundays and after i graduated college i had the great privilege of uh, working my first job with the apc office and that was just 
edifying and nourishing on way too many fronts for me to put into one video. Um, I'm so grateful also for the leadership who was so patient in investing the time and effort in teaching me about worship and letting me serve on that platform. And something that I could never be grateful enough for is the fact that I got to meet this incredible guy at APC. And we're so grateful that we got to spend that entire premarital season leading into the wedding uh, with the church. And finally, when it was time for us to move, we were with just the blessing of so much prophecy and prophetic words that nourished us uh, long after the move and still continues to be so important and vital to us. So we will forever be grateful for everything the Lord did for us through APC. No amount of words can actually express how much we are thankful. And okay, I'll just stop with them. Um... Okay, I have one more, and then um, I think we'll stop. So uh, this couple, uh, it's funny how they met, and uh, you know the uh, the lady there, uh, her name is Ashwini, and uh, she was actually uh, from a, from my hometown, right? And I know her father, and her father was um, uh, was really. Uh, you know, it was a mentor to us when we were growing up, even we were in our youth. So she was really, really small um, when I, you know, first, you know, tiny, um, uh, tiny little girl. Um, so when, when she came to Bangalore, of course, we got to know that she was here and then she was part of another church location, didn't get to see her too often. But then um, when she started serving in church in worship, of course, got to meet her and spend time. And then um, the thing is, when uh, her, uh, uh, when, when she got an opportunity to serve as staff uh, as a graphic designer uh, as an illustrator uh, her dad came and said you know i'm so glad that you are here that uh, you you're your wife you are here to look after her and so on and and then he left and then uh, we came to know that um, uh, that she uh, you know uh, was that that Roshan, the person there, you know, he was uh, the guy that uh, he was interested in her, and and you know, we were all very very uh, alert, and we were trying to see, you know, if that was the right thing, and uh, uh, it was it was a funny incident that happened, uh, you know, we were on a mission trip, and then this little girl came up to me, one of the little girls came up to me and said, uh, and she just kind of announced. Uh, who's this uncle, this, uh, you know, this Ashwini auntie is talking to? And I rose up, I was like, who's, you know? <laughs> she actually said, you know, are they are they going to get married? And I was like, I just rose up, no, this is not happening on my watch. You know, what is happening? So I just went and saw, and then, uh, you know, uh, it is good to see things unfold. So, yeah, see a lot of, um, you know, those things happen as well. Uh, it's wonderful people meeting their uh, spouse in church okay i just want one more video and this is um, this is from rebecca um yeah um let me just share that Praise the Lord. Happy 20th anniversary, All People's Church. My name is Rebecca Yiga, and I'm from Kampala, East Africa. That's in Africa. <laughs> I first encountered All People's Church in the year 2012 uh, when my two sisters and I moved to Bangalore City for college. And like everybody who's not at home and in unfamiliar surrounding, I was a bit nervous. I did not know how that would go on. But uh, God was so good to me. I found such a loving community at APC, especially at North, uh, where I was part of the worship team, but uh, with the rest of the church as well, through the different activities. I also got an opportunity to grow in the Word through the work of All People's Church Bible College. And um, all that has affected what I'm doing, both in ministry and with the NGO that I work with right now. And I'm grateful to God for that. APC has continued to be the gift that keeps giving. Uh, last year, uh, during the lockdown, I signed up for the online Bible college and I am glad that I'm in my final semester 
to finish up my bachelor's in theology and practical ministry and every single class that I'm attending today, God continues to speak to my day to day and I'm grateful to God for that. So I pray that as we go into our 20 years, uh, God will do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you have hoped for. Happy anniversary. Yeah, that was uh, that was Becky. Becky served uh, so well when she was uh, here with us. Um, yeah, and she served, served in worship. And there were a few of uh, the students who joined, who were again from U Uganda. Uh, I remember uh, Andrew, and uh, you know, uh, so um, uh, they, uh, you know, they was uh, they were all they served sacrificially. You know, very inspiring the way they served in worship. They were they served in uh, other departments as well, and uh, they were quite an inspiration. Yeah. Uh, that's right. <laughs> she is from Uganda, and uh, we still, we still, you know, they are still part of our, uh, you know, the the, the group. The, uh, you know, um, still keep in touch uh, time to time. Uh, but you know, uh, just want uh, just a disclaimer. You know, like you might hear this. You know, when you see these testimony videos, you see that okay, you know, APC being repeated and said and so on. But it's not like we are, you know. You know, it's not like the church and ministry is perfect. Like there are, uh, like I said, unfinished parts. There are things that need to, you know, there's, you know, there's always room for improvement and all that. But, um, but we just everybody, you know, uh, like personally, all of us are on, are on a journey. So also the church and ministry. But I just want to, you know, just point to you, each one of you here. Um, there are what, how many of you? Uh, Twenty nine, uh, twenty eight of you. That um, that God can do release uh, a great work which can be a blessing uh, to the place where you are um, the nation and the nations you know i just wanted to um, just uh, release that you know over your lives that that god can do that and god wants to do that right and and, and our call uh, uh, each one of us is unique and uh, it can be similar to what we saw but uh, it can be very very different but the thing is to be faithful to that call, right? And when we are faithful to the call, we will that we will be uh, fruitful. We will be a blessing, right? Right where you are. So, um, when when we see, you know, when you look at the classroom, when we see, you know, each one of us uh, being carry, each one of us, you know, dispensers of the blessing of God. Each one of us carriers of, you know, as earthen vessels, we are carrying that treasure, the knowledge of God, the presence of God. You know, we're carrying that. Um, just want to encourage us to to be dispensers. You know, wherever we go, wherever we are, to be faithful dispensers. You know, not just carriers or not just complacent carriers, but to be, you know, a diligent dispensers, you know, diligent doers of the word. Right. So. Um, so if you can open your Bibles to, um, you know, to um, maybe Colossians verse 1. Yeah, Colossians 1, the prayer that Paul prayed over the church, Colossae, right? Colossians 1 verse 9 says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom, and a spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love uh, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation and so on, right? But um, just want us to, I uh, want to highlight the first few verses. It says, you know, this is what he prayed. He said that we may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, right? 
for all patients and long suffering with joy. So just those three verses, you know, verse nine, verse 10 and verse 11. I just want us to, you know, take this time to pray over us, right? pray over yourself and say, Lord, that I may be filled. I pray that I may be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we just, shall we just pray that first thing, right? Verse nine is, uh, yes, Lord, we, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We seek your face right now. And yes, Lord, according to your word, it's right before us, God. The prayers that was prayed many years ago, hundreds of years ago, over the church in Colise. Oh, God, we pray that over ourselves. Yes, Lord, this is our cry, that we may be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Fill us, God. Fill us, God. Lord, we realize that it's not a one-time thing. We know that it is a walk. We know that it's a daily walk, that it's a daily moment-by-moment -moment walk. And I pray, God, Lord, we pray for each one of us that we would walk with you in intimacy, that we would walk with you, oh God, in closeness, God, that we might hear your whispers, God. We might hear what you're whispering, oh God, that we might be that close, oh God, so that we might be faithful to to shout from the rooftops, God. Yes, Lord, we do not want to shout from the rooftops without first hearing what you whisper in our ears, God, that we may be filled with the knowledge of your will, O oh God, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray that second one, O oh God, that, that we may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleased for pleasing him and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Right? So let's pray that. Yes, Lord, we also ask, oh God, we pray that we may walk worthy, worthy, oh God, worthy of the Lord, worthy of the call. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we carry your image, oh God. Lord, we've been created, Lord, in your, in your image, God. And we've been redeemed, oh God, that image that was shattered because of sin, oh God, we've been redeemed, brought back, oh God, that we might fully represent you, God, fully represent you, God. And Lord, we pray that Christ, Christ, you be formed in us, that we might be increasingly Christ-like, that we may walk, Lord, live our lives in all that we think and speak and do, and God, that we may walk worthy of you, Lord, in, oh God, in everything, and Lord, that we will be fruitful, that we will be pleasing you at all times, pleasing you at all times. Yes, let this be our lifestyle, God. Let us be our daily thing, oh God, to fully please you, Lord, to be fully aware of pleasing you, to check ourselves, to question ourselves, and to stop when we're not fully pleasing you, God. Hallelujah. That we may walk worthy of you, Lord. And be fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge. Increase in your knowledge. Increase in knowing you, God. Increase in knowing what you have spoken. Increasing your likes and dislikes. Increasing in the knowledge of your opinion, God. Increasing in the knowledge of your will, O oh God. Hallelujah. We know that that does not come from a distance, God. We know that it comes from a daily walk with you. O oh God, we pray that we may walk in that closeness that we may increase in the knowledge of the Lord. We may increase in the knowledge of the word of God, that we may increase in the knowledge of the word of God. Oh God, yes, Lord, that we may increase, oh God, in the things of the spirit, oh God. Lord, increase our spiritual capacities, oh God, that we may be strong in the inner man, oh God. Hallelujah. Verse 11, oh God, that we may be strengthened with all might according to your glorious power. Hallelujah. Strengthened with all might. Even right now, I just pray for a strengthening, for an increasing, God, of strength in the inner man. According to your glorious power. Yes, Lord. I pray for increasing our spiritual capacities. Increasing our spiritual capacities, Lord, that we may be strong in the inner man, God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yeah. That we might be strong. That we might be rooted. Yes, Lord, there are no limits to you, God. Lord, there are no limits to what you can do in us. That there are no limits to what you can pour out into our hearts, God. And so we ask, oh God, that you would pour out, God, that we might be strengthened with all might according to your glorious power 
for all patience and long suffering. Hallelujah. That Christ likeness, God, patience and long suffering with joy. Even as we live our lives, God, we know that, Lord, that we would be, that you've called us to be like you, God, in our interactions with people, in, Lord, in all that we do, in our serving, God, that we might be Christ like. In our families, God, that we might be Christ like. With our neighbors, God, that we might be Christ like. For this purpose, you have filled us. For this purpose, O oh God, with your glorious power, that we might be Christ like. For all long suffering, with joy and patience with joy for this purpose that you have filled us. You've called us to be strong in the inner man, not just to walk in signs and wonders and miracles, but also to be Christ-like. For this purpose, you've called us patience, long-suffering, the fruit of the Spirit, O oh God, may be displayed in and through our lives. And Lord, I pray that uh, even as we God, even as you've called each one of us to minister in various ways, maybe as apostles and evangelists and pastors and teachers, oh God, prophets, God, and God, we we do not know, God, but then even as we, uh, even as you uh, let this grow in us, Lord, the sense of call uh, for those of us who do not know, let it grow in us. For those of us who are called already, oh God, I pray that we are even more increasing of that, oh God, and strengthening of that, God. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Um, so thank you, are, Pastor. God bless. Right. Um, so we stopped right here. And so this course is officially over. There'll be a couple of uh, tests and which will also be put in the stream. So if one of you sees the you know notification about the tests, uh, please put it on your WhatsApp group so everyone knows as well. Right. Okay. So we'll meet on Wednesday. Uh, please check the schedule. Um, let me just quickly um, yeah, announce. I think it's uh, Prezi uh, and two others who are sharing on Wednesday. So please do come prepared. I'm talking about the biblical preaching class, right? Okay. Okay, see you all. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. All right, see you.